the recent Pittsburgh massacre was the most deadly attack targeting Jews in North American history. Many have noted the rise in anti-Semitism over the last few years. How are we to understand this development? As with almost any historical uh, development, there is usually uh, there are usually a number of causes for any particular uh, development or process that we see unfolding before our eyes. And yet, one can and one should uh, point out specific causes for such developments. Here, I wish to discuss one particular uh, aspect of this issue, and that is the belief uh, on the part of uh, many uh, white people of European descent, both in North America and in Europe, as well as in other countries such as Australia. The belief of uh, people of European stock that their nations, their countries, and their cultures, their civilizations uh, are essentially on the chopping block. That their way of life, their values, the uh, societal norms and systems to which they are used and to which uh, they, uh, in, in, under which they wish to, to live and, the, and that they wish to hand down to their children and grandchildren, they believe, and I would agree with them, they believe that their way of life, their identity as people of European stock and uh, people of European descent and therefore the inheritors of uh, European Western civilization and society, they believe all this is in peril. The reason so many uh, people of, of this background feel this way is of course a direct result of uh, the mass and entirely irresponsible uh, immigration policies of uh, many countries, particularly European countries, as we know particularly from 2015 onwards. Europe has been inundated with uh, third world immigrants. But in fact this process has been going on for many decades. It began in uh, the UK uh, in the uh, 60s. It began in Australia in the early 70s. Till that time, Australia had what was known as the White Australia Policy, whereby immigrants, uh, immigration was limited to people of European background. This policy was very foolishly abandoned in the, in the early 70s, uh, a decision taken by then Prime Minister uh, Gough Whitlam. And this has also been the case in North America uh, for many years now. In Europe in particular, this has accelerated and become uh, a truly uh, enormous uh, crisis for those who wish to see European nations remain exactly what they are, European nations. That is to say, the homelands and the uh, societies for European peoples who wish to remain uh, European, who identify as European, who wish to maintain their cultural uh, heritage, uh, etc. They feel threatened, and again I reiterate, they are correct to feel so. They are absolutely 100% correct in my view. I think it is a massive crime on the part, I would say even a treasonous act on the part of uh, many politicians in the West for allowing and facilitating such uh, un uncontrolled and uh, massive immigration of uh, third world uh, immigrants into, into these countries. 
it is also a massive uh, historical act of folly. As a result of uh, this apprehension, many uh, people of European background are looking for, for those who are responsible, wish to blame, find the people they can blame and uh, attack for what has been going on over, in some cases for decades, in other cases more particularly over the last few years. And it is true, unfortunately, and I think this needs to be frankly admitted by Jews all over the world, that there are, without doubt, Jews uh, involved in those movements and those uh, organizations, very often NGOs, etc., who promote this uh, phenomenon of third world immigration into the, into the Western countries. And the conclusion of these Europeans and Americans is that uh, the Jews are behind this policy, that this is some kind of Jewish conspiracy to water down uh, white American or white European societies or to inflict irreparable damage on these societies. In some cases I've seen claims made by such people that the Jews are doing this deliberately as an act of revenge against uh, the European nations who, who uh, discriminated against the Jews for uh, not just for centuries but actually one could say for millennia. Um, uh, in response to uh, pogroms and massacres and inquisitions, etc., against the Jewish people throughout history, that the Jews are now uh, taking their revenge. And this is exactly uh, the, the problem. This reading of recent events, and also events going back even a uh, hundred years and more, going back to the Russian Revolution and before, this reading of uh, historical developments is entirely, absolutely misunderstood and, and mistaken. It is a miscomprehension of the uh, true uh, desire and will and purpose of the Jewish people. It is not in any way um, desirable from the perspective of, of authentic Torah Judaism that uh, people from the third world be allowed to inundate uh, Western societies and essentially turn them into second world and eventually into third world countries. That is an absolutely, uh, a, an absolutely false and pernicious claim. The reason many people are reaching these kinds of conclusions is because they see many Jews involved in, in these movements, many, many Jews who promote uh, th these kinds of agendas. And one cannot deny that that is technically so. There are many people who are biologically and uh, even halachically Jewish, that is to say they are Jewish from the perspective of, of Jewish law, but in no other sense, in no meaningful sense are they Jewish. These people are, uh, have, been, have almost without exception have been brought up in homes that were bereft of any Jewish content. Uh, these Jews down to a man and down to a woman uh, are uh, assimilationist. In other words their aim is to assimilate into wider Gentile society. That of course is the opposite of what uh, authentic Torah-based Judaism preaches. According to the Torah, the Jewish people are a unique people and must have always been and must remain a separate people, as the verse states uh, in, the, in, the, in the Torah. Hen This is a nation that will dwell alone. This has always been the case. It was only when certain Jews who had already gone far down the path of assimilation 
I'm talking now about the 18th century and the 19th century, when, some, uh, when a, cri a certain critical mass of such Jews began to appear in Europe, and they did not any longer wish to identify as Jews, they began to uh, search for ways. They began to seek ways and uh, modalities that would allow them to be absorbed into, uh, into the general society around them. And they found that because of uh, an ingrained anti-Semitism that existed in their host countries, not their homelands, because according to the Torah, uh, no other country on earth except Eretz Yisrael, except for the land of Israel, is the homeland of, of the Jewish people, or any individual Jew for that matter. It is only an assimilated Jew who feels that he is Hungarian, or Russian, or British, or American. A Jew who feels that way is already admitting that he has lost any meaningful contact with his true Jewish identity. But for such people, uh, one can understand from their warped perspective that uh, the increase of immigration and the, uh, the weakening of the forces of, of nationalism within their host countries is to their benefit. This works to increase the likelihood that they will be accepted as part of the fabric of their host societies. But this must be understood to be what it is. This is an assimilationist policy of certain Jews who are no longer Jewish in any meaningful way. This has nothing to do with Judaism and has nothing to do with the Jewish people. This is all about confused uh, Jews who wish to cease being Jewish in any meaningful way. Uh, this is all about Jews who know nothing about their Jewish heritage, Jewish culture and civilization, uh, Jewish history and, and religion. Such people do not re represent the Jewish people. Such people, the historical uh, Jewish people, the, the entity that we refer to in Hebrew as Klal Yisrael, the, the historical people of Israel who have existed for nearly 4,000 years. They, they do not represent us. They represent their own particular uh, subjective concerns and, and goals, Just and, and therefore they belong to all kinds of movements, social uh, fads and philosophies. Essentially we're talking about uh, postmodernist uh, cultural Marxism, which of course is based on, amongst other things, uh, the, the essential concept that uh, human beings should not identify uh, according to their nationality or their national um, cultural background and inheritance, but rather in human beings should identify according to their according to old communist theory, economic communist uh, theory. They should identify according to their class, so that they belong to the pro proletariat or, or to the uh, bourgeoisie, etc. People should belong to a class and, and consider themselves brothers and sisters of all other people who belong to that same economic class throughout the world, without distinction. It is not by accident, it is not a coincidence that the anthem of communism and socialism is the well-known uh, anthem known by the term the international, the international. In other words, the, the, the main thrust of this warped and, and uh, pernicious ideology, this, this evil philosophy, is that human beings should tear down the concepts uh, of nationhood and individual cultures and peoples and feel themselves uh, to belong to some sort of internationalist community. This was the basis of uh, Marxist philosophy, which originally took on a, an economic form. In other words, it related to and, 
and uh, wished to view things through the prism of economics. Later, other people, having seen the uh, complete lack of success of this ideology uh, to bring about any kind of real revolution in the world, um, changed the focus of Marxism and they developed something called cultural Marxism, which refers to uh, an intellectually uh, driven philosophy which seeks to convince people uh, not by force, but by propaganda, by so-called education, that is to say uh, brainwashing of uh, people over a period of generations to abandon all kinds of basic ideas and values that, uh, that nations, that peoples, that families held dear, have, have always held dear from time immemorial, to abandon all those ideals and to adopt other notions and other ideas. And one of the terms uh, and one of the es essential terms and essential concepts that were used for this purpose was the term racism. In other words, they trained people, they brainwashed people in the schools, in the newspapers, in the media, uh, through Hollywood films, through films created elsewhere, outside of Hollywood, in the universities, they brainwashed people uh, to subscribe to the notion that all cultures are equivalent, that uh, all peoples are the same, there are no differences between nations, between ethnic groups, and that the most desirable uh, utopian reality that could be hoped for in human affairs would be a complete uh, admixture of the nations, of the ethnic groups, and of the cultures. There is much more to be said about this. I do not wish to uh, address all the, all the various uh, aspects of this issue at this moment. What I wish to uh, emphasize at this moment is that these movements exist not because Jews invented them. It is true that there were, were quite a number of Jews, people of Jewish background, of Jewish descent, involved in these movements, in these, in these philosophies, and in these uh, um, social and intellectual uh, movements and, uh, and uh, bodies that uh, promoted these ideas over the many decades, going back to the 1930s. But that does not mean it is in any way a Jewish uh, philosophy. This does not mean that it's in any way um, in concert with true Jewish concepts and aims. The true, Jew, uh, the true aims of the Jewish people are to see every nation, as I have pointed out in, in, in uh, previous uh, discussions, according to the Torah, nations should be uh, defined according to their uh, language, shared common language and history and culture and heritage. And uh, according to the Torah, humanity naturally should and inevitably will uh, be divided into nation states, not the concept of the melting pot, which was so, so very popular in the 1960s and 70s. That's the, that is precisely the opposite of what both the Torah and reason and experience have shown us. The Jewish concept of uh, the proper format and mode of existence for humanity is to be uh, divided into those ethnic groupings, each in their own territory, where each is allowed and able to develop its uh, culture and its talents based on its own uh, inherited uh, values and uh, ideologies and beliefs. This is true for the Jewish people and is true for all peoples. The idea, the suggestion that there is some kind of Jewish conspiracy to bring about the opposite of what I have just described is inane. It is in fact the very opposite of what Judaism preaches. The fact that a person who is of Jewish descent may uh, subscribe to such ideas does not make it a Jewish 
uh, philosophy, a Jewish uh, outlook in any way, shape or form. This is simply a, a Jew who has uh, lost his way and has joined uh, many other people, some Jews and some non-Jews, who believe in this kind of vision for humanity. It is therefore a very uh, mo a most tragic and uh, lamentable state of affairs that today many uh, people of European descent in different parts of the Western world have either reached the conclusion or have been convinced by others, some of whom may have anti-Semitic anti uh, agendas and leanings, that uh, the Jews, as, as a Jewish people, are responsible for and uh, advocate and promote the, uh, the dilution of, of the Western world into some kind of uh, second and eventually a third world melting pot. This is not uh, the Jewish vision for humanity. This is quite the opposite. I would agree entirely with those people uh, in the West that the Western world should uh, raise, raise its borders and, and strengthen uh, its, it, their borders against uh, illegal uh, immigration. They should, the immigration policies should be uh, reversed and the uh, indigenous peoples of, of the various Western nations should be allowed to live in their own homelands according to their traditional uh, cultures and uh, societal structures and, and belief systems. That is what should be done for the people in Europe. That is what should be done for the people of Africa. That is what should be done for all, all nations. The Jews are not responsible for the internationalist, uh, cultural, Marxist, postmodernist agenda of, of these uh, liberal, uh, so-called self-appointed self know-alls who believe that they will bring about uh, a, ut a utopian future for, for humanity. Judaism is in fact opposed to all that these people represent. The production of these videos and maintaining this channel demands much time and money. If you enjoyed this video, please show your appreciation and support. To make a donation, please go to www.machonshilo.org and press the PayPal button which appears on the upper right hand side of the home page. To sponsor a video or purchase Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, please write us at office at machonshilo.org.